morning, YouTube. This is Jeff Hale here from Comprehensive Outdoors. This channel is made to help you become a more comprehensive outdoors person. And today we have a guest fly tire on, and his name is Greg Colby. I met Greg approximately 15 years ago. He was working in a fly shop, and he was also coaching girls' high school swim. He has four state girls' high school championships for Bainbridge High School, and last year he was also inducted into the Washington State Coaches Hall of Fame for being a swim coach. In addition to that, Greg swam um, for Wisconsin. He's a uh, Wisconsin Badger, Badger Red, and an avid, avid fly fisherman. Greg now lives in Idaho, and today he's going to be tying what he invented and is called the Shatubi. And when we say that, it's how the acronym would sound. It's S-H-T-B-B, -B, and stands for the Short Hackled Thin Body Bugger. I've used this fly, and Greg's used this fly, and we've caught lots of fish. We generally use it for trout and lakes, but it's also worked as a nymph. It's also worked for sea run cutthroat. Check it out. I think you're going to like it. Hey, everybody, and uh, welcome to another episode of uh, Comprehensive Outdoors. Greg Colby here from Eagle, Idaho, and um, thanks to uh, Jeff Hale for asking me to be a guest today. <clears throat> I'd like to uh, give a shout out to my uh, Bainbridge Island gangster fly fisher buddies. You know who you are, and uh, I hope we get to fish together uh, real soon again. Um, I'm going to be tying the Shatubi today, which uh, stands for Short Hackle Thin Bodied Bugger. So, lights, camera, action. So the Shatubi, um, like I said, is a variation of a woolly bugger. And uh, what I got here is a Daiichi 1270 size 6 hook. It's a little bit big. Um, you can tie these all the way down to far, uh, size 14. And I have a 532nd tungsten bead. Um, I'm going to be using some... Unithread 6 out olive. Uh, we're going to tie this in green. Um, maybe imitate a damselfly. Uh, you can tie them in any color you would like. Um, I started tying this in the 90s when I was fishing western Washington lakes. Uh, extensively and I know that the Lowland Lake uh, season is supposed to open this Saturday but I think we all know what's going on with that um, so I'll just throw a thread base on there the thin bodied part of this fly is just a thread base so it's a good fly for beginner fly fishers uh, beginner fly tires and uh, so I got the base on there take a little bit of flashaboo and got two or three strands that are going to turn into More than that, because I'm going to fold it over and leave it pretty long right now. And just keep building a thread base. Keep that real thin profile. I'm going to leave that pretty long right now because I'm going to tie in the tail real bushy with the tail because I'm going to trim it real short so it's going to look too long I mean it look might look about right for a regular woolly bugger but um, I'm going to tie it in and then use some of the olive 
marabou as a way to build some bulk in the body of the fly. But trim it so that I can still use the thread as the main base of the body. Okay, so I'm trying to separate the flashaboo from the tail so I can trim the tail. I'm going to trim it really close. So it's like a little puffy tail. And then I'm going to trim that flashaboo about the same length as the hook shank, maybe a touch shorter, just to give it a little flash. And use some copper wire for a little bit of, of contrast. You can use green to keep the color scheme the same. You can use red to imitate some hemoglobin or blood in the fly. And again, just a thread base makes it easy and pretty darn quick to tie. Um, I'm not sure if I've mentioned the lakes I've used this in. Uh, I've used it in um, Buck Lake and Island Lake and Kitsap County and I've used it in uh, Horseshoe Lake and Silent Lake in Jefferson County and Katy Lake and Spencer Lake in Mason County. Um, there's a lot more lakes in all three of those counties that this fly would probably work in. All right, so um, I strip fluff off of there. I'm gonna tie that, tie that in. Those big fingers, but there you go. And then trim that. And this is the short hackle part. There's I realize you can't see anything because I'm using my hands, but I finally got the bugger hackled. <laughs> and I'm going to work forward with the wire to secure that. It's the realities of fly tying and fly fishing that stuff doesn't always go exactly the way you want. <laughs> All right, so finally got her. Your tail's okay, I think. And uh, I'm gonna finish her off <clears throat> with some lip finish. Um, I I am a fan of using the lightest thread you need to on a fly. And uh, I'm also a fan of using the lightest head cement. Um, I'm going to go a 
Mm. You can hear my dog snorting in the background there, can't you? <laughs> Brookie. All right, so there's a three, two, and one. Yikes. One. Uh, whip finish with that. Uh, Olive thread collar there, and uh, we trim that off. And I like Griffiths thin again. People are using all kinds of stuff, and I know when you've watched videos of uh, of uh, Jim Corsetti doing the rolled muddler, and then especially his um, epoxy head. Minnow, he uses UV not sense, which is uh, perfect for that application. But I like thin stuff for these trout flies. And I got one more little piece of the ackle to trim off. And there you go. The Shatubi <laughs> short hackle thin bodied bugger. All right. Thanks again. If you like, hit like. And uh, please subscribe to uh, Comprehensive Outdoors.